All right, let's do this. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining. It's time for another exciting lightning talk. I'm Parak Kartka, your host for tonight. I'm the head of consulting practices at Enrhythm, and we have a lot of exciting lightning talks lined up for you in the upcoming weeks. Our lightning talks are hosted every Thursday at 5.15 p.m. Eastern time. And each week, one of our consultants speaks on the latest trends in the industry that will help you keep learning and growing in your career. And uh, this week, uh, Joshua Buchanan, who is a senior iOS engineer with us, is going to give us a primer on CIF Combine. So uh, what's Combine? Combine is Apple's latest and greatest reactive framework, which gives you the ability to customize the handling of asynchronous events. And I'm curious to learn a lot more about Combine, the best practices of using it. So without further ado, let's get it started, Joshua. Thank you. So today we're going to, going to be talking uh, about Combine in Swift. It's a big topic. There's a lot to, to take in about Combine. So we're going to take it a little bit at a time. And yeah, okay. So what is Combine? Combine is Apple's approach to asynchronous code in Swift. Swift UI leverages Combine behind the scenes. Uh, Combine was announced at WWDC in 2019. So it is actively being used in products that are shipping every day. It's important as we start talking about Combine that we really get to the foundation of the pieces that make up Combine, and then we can talk about some of the ways that it's used. So <clears throat> some of the key foundation pieces that make up Combine are publishers and subscribers, and those two work together to make uh, Combine work. A publisher is is code that emits values over time. And then subscribers are going to receive those values from the publishers. Uh, the most common subscriber is called sync. And we'll see that uh, in just a moment. With Swift UI, you could already be using combine and you don't realize it. So if you've ever, used an observable object with uh, an app published property wrapper, you've been using Combine. If the out of the box functionality of publishers or subscribers don't meet your needs, you can actually create custom publishers and custom subscribers. We're not gonna talk about that today, uh, but it is something uh, to keep in mind, if you feel like you, there's limitations to the out-of-the-box implementation of uh, publishers and subscribers from Apple. So <clears throat> one of the questions is, why do you want to use Combine? There is a learning curve. It's a, it's a change from using closures. So the, you want to make sure as you're getting into new technology, you're not just adopting new technology because it's the latest and greatest, but also because you are benefiting from it. A big part of Combine is you're able to interact with the data and process the data before it shows up. So your publisher can modify values before emitting them out to the subscribers. And additionally, the subscribers can modify the values when they receive them, but before they're uh, displayed or, uh, or used by other parts of your code. Combine can really help improve your code's readability. For example, if you've ever had to do, uh, if you've ever had to do network requests that the next network request relies on data coming back from the previous network request, you get into this situation where you have uh, nested network requests and that kind of thing can be difficult to follow, difficult to understand. It's really difficult to maintain and debug and combine really 
simplifies that down into something that's easy to read, easy to test, easy to debug. The next thing we need to know about Combine are the various operators that are part of Combine that make up Combine and its functionality. There are a number of different operators that are used in Combine. We're just gonna talk about some of the most common used ones uh, today. So operators in Combine are used to modify and or filter values that are being passed down the combined stream. Some frequently used operators include uh, the map and the filter operators. There are some other common operators that, uh, that you use when you're using combined. Again, this is a subset of the total number of combined operators that are available. You can do a try map, a decode, a map error, and a race to any publisher. You're going to see these operators regularly when you're doing network quests. So to demonstrate some of that, I just want to show an old school closure based network request and then we'll dig into the uh, combined way of doing it. So an old school network request, if you've done any kind of network requests in Swift in the past, this is all gonna look very familiar to you. you know, we're taking a URL, we're making a request, we're checking if there was an error in the request, then we're taking the response, we're processing it, then checking the status code. And uh, finally, we're checking the data that there wasn't any problem with the data. And then we're decoding that data into, you know, in this case, a Swift object. There's a lot going on here and managing the various places where this request can fail, uh, can get tedious. There's a lot of opportunities for things to go wrong. And so you can really leverage combined to, excuse me, combined to make your job easier, to make your code more robust, as well as easier to read and maintain. So let's take a look at a combined network request. Here's a, a combined publisher, uh, the publisher side of a network request. It looks, it, it can look like there's a lot going on here. So we're, we'll go ahead and break it down into the individual pieces uh, just to help understand what, what all the pieces are and, and how they work together. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our publisher. So we've got a URL session that is returning a data task publisher. In the old school network request, we were returning a data task. So this is a slightly different uh, information that's coming back. What we're doing here is we're just passing a URL into our publisher, and then that data is gonna be processed, or sorry, that URL is gonna be processed and uh, get some data and move from there. So the first thing we wanna do when we make our URL request is to, is to test that data as it's coming back. So this is where we start by leveraging our try map operator. Again, we're taking the network request. It's getting data back as well as response data. The try map is gonna let us quickly check the response, check the response status code, and if there's something wrong with the response or the response data code, uh, we can, the publisher is going to publish that network service error out uh, to the subscriber. Assuming everything's gone well with the initial request and the data coming back, we're gonna go ahead and try decoding that JSON response that's coming back into a Swift object. So you can see that happening here. The uh, decode and the decoder are all condensed into a single line of, of code. Makes it really easy to follow what's going on, really easy to, to get implemented. As anyone who's done Swift network work in the past, you know that there are a number of things that can go wrong as you're decoding JSON into a Swift object. 
So this is where we leverage the map error operator. So we've gotten the, we've received the initial re, uh, response back. We've now attempted to decode the data that came back as a response. And if something goes wrong as part of that process, we're gonna use this map error operator. If we're able to take that response and identify it as a decoding error, we're gonna report out through the publisher that there was a decoding error, we need to handle it. If there's any other kind of error that happens at this state, we're gonna return a generic error and a description of what went wrong. Again, we're just gonna take a look at this uh, combined publisher network request once, uh, one more time with all of those pieces put back together. You can see the publisher can, <clears throat> see if I can error, arrow here. I don't know if I can. You can see here, the publisher is going to handle uh, processing the URL. And if there's a problem with the URL, the publisher is going to uh, publish out a network service error or uh, will continue down its path. And then you'll see we're leveraging the try map, the decode, and the map error. <clears throat> the way that combine code works is that we are our publisher is returning a generic publisher. And in this case, we're returning either a Swift object or a network service error, depending on what happens inside of this code block. Down at the bottom, you'll notice that we have this erase to any publisher. Similar to the way that Swift UI has views that are generic and that return back, uh, combine is going to use this erase to any publisher to simplify all of this down into the type that the function is actually returning. So now that we've seen the publisher in action, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the subscriber and how the subscriber works. So here's a, an example of a subscriber. <clears throat> You'll notice as we, uh, as we saw on the old school uh, network requests and something that we're all very familiar with, <clears throat> excuse me, when we're handling network requests that are updating the UI as part of the process, we need to make sure that this process is being handled on the main thread so that as we finish processing it, it updates the user interface on the main thread as well. One thing you'll notice here is that with Combine, we're able to condense all of that code. It's making sure that we're operating on the main thread into a single line of code. Uh, <clears throat> I mentioned syncs before. Here's an example of the sync in action. The sync is going to, it's where all of the information from the publisher is going to fall into. So whether we return a network error or we return an object that's going to fall into this sync so that it can be processed. You'll see that we have two different code paths for handling the response coming out of that publisher. So the first code path we're handling if, an, if a network error response is returned. And then the second code path is if a object is returned back, <clears throat> excuse me, from that publisher. And in the event that an object comes back, we take that uh, object and we assign that published object uh, to the uh, view model variable. So what I can do here is um, just show you this, uh, this code in action. So let's see, let's get X code up here. And we're just going to show a side-by-side -side of the old school network request, as well as the combined network request. So we're taking advantage of two different APIs. The first API is using the traditional uh, 
closure based network request in Swift. And then the second one is leveraging a, a hey, I'm bored. Give me an idea of something I can do with my time API. And it is leveraging the combined architecture. So you can see here when the application loads. It's just going to show this one more time. You can see here when the application loads in the simulator, both of these services are going to go out, do the network request, and then update the UI. So you get the same benefit, the same interaction, the same result with the code. They are happening in two uh, different ways. You can see here that when we, you know, we can click the button, get a new cat fact using that traditional old school uh, Swift code for network requests. You can see the same thing happening here with the combined code. So just wanted to show this, and then we're just going to jump back, see side by side of the way that the old school way is working, and then just compare that to the, uh, the combined way of doing it. You can see we have our URL session. We're doing our data task. You can see again, there's a lot going on here, and it's it's it can be difficult to manage that. Uh, compare that to our combined code, where everything is modularized. It's it's easier to test. It's easier to see what's going on. It's easier to read what's going on, but also to control what's going on and test it and maintain it. So. We can just look at these two side by side, and you'll see that in this case, we are handling this through a publisher, and in this case, uh, we're handling it through a data task. Again, these operators make it easy to see exactly what you're doing, how we're leveraging Combine. One of the important things to keep in mind about Combine is while we've demonstrated how you would use Combine for a network request, which is often the first interaction or the introduction that folks have with Combine, it's not only for network requests. There's a handful of different ways that I've used it in the past. But again, remember, Combine is just a clean, efficient way of handling asynchronous code running uh, on iOS using Swift. So some of the ways that I've been using it on a day-to-day -day basis is we have uh, some text field inputs that when the values come in, we want to be doing some complex data manipulation and then presenting that, uh, that value after it's been manipulated using Combine back in the text field. Oftentimes, if you're uh, you have a local set of data and you want to filter it. Um, you you want to use the filter operator on an array of data. And as that filter happens in combine, we update the UI and present those new, uh, those new values. Uh, the last way that I've used combine in the past is if you start a timer in the background of your of your application, but you want to be updating that UI on some basis. Um, you know, it, way I've used it in the past, we had a countdown timer, and all of that code that's processing that timer in the background, the publisher is then taking that new value, giving handing it off to the subscriber. The subscriber is able to use that and then present that information on the UI in a slick, asynchronous way. So I just want to review the uh, what we've talked about today in terms of this introduction to Combine. Combine has been known to be uh, a bit overwhelming. Again, you start seeing the different operators, and you start seeing, you know, what's a publisher, what's a subscriber, and it can it can 
scare people off if they don't take the right approach to learning it. So I wanted to focus today on that introduction, get people familiar with the operators, get people familiar with the publisher and the subscriber and how those things work together. And then get just an example of what a network call looks like and demonstrating in the code how you actually see, you know, here's, here's the older way of doing it. You can see it's cleaner, it's easier to follow in combine and uh, you know talk about some of the other uses for combine uh, combine is a really powerful swift technology uh, there's all kinds of ways that you can leverage the out of the box functionality coming from apple but they've also given you the ability to customize your publishers pu customize your subscribers so that if there's something you need your uh, code to do that isn't handled out of the box you can just build on top of what's already there. Um, this is just the beginning in terms of understanding combine. Uh, in the future, we want to do uh, combine versus uh, compare and contrast against the new async await, uh, what some of the benefits are, uh, what some of the drawbacks are. And combine is filling a lot of the gaps that async await isn't able to handle, especially when you get into those more complex uh, situations, uh, use cases. So there's definitely still plenty of reason to learn combine today in, you know, as we round out 2022 and lead into 2023. There are plenty of really beneficial reasons to learn and combine, understanding combine and leveraging combine uh, because it can give you a leg up over uh, just relying on uh, async await that's, uh, that's been added to Swift. So again, just the beginning introductory, uh, introduction to combine. We definitely, definitely got plans to take it to the intermediate and advanced level in terms of uh, what combine is, how to use it, uh, does anyone have any questions for me? So uh, Josh, just real quick here. Uh, I know you touched base a little bit on it, but for someone that's coming in, that's been working on closures, you know, for most of their career, um, you know, how easy or complex is it to learn combine, uh, you know, versus some of the old functionality that's available? Yeah, so again, folks that are used to doing closures in Swift, they they kind of pick up uh, a book or, or read a Medium post or something on Combine and, and they get scared away. Uh, but they don't need to be scared. It, it, once you understand the relationship between the, so the subscribers and the publishers and how those two communicate back to each other, um, once you have that, that foundational learning, Going from the, the closure-based way of doing things to the combined way is not as difficult as it seems on the surface. And, and that's part of what I was trying to, uh, what I'm trying to emphasize here is you don't need to be scared. That, that transferring one behavior to the other is, uh, it's not as complex as a lot of us think. Thank you, Joshua. Excellent talk. Uh, really, really uh well uh, presented and um, as a reminder to you all we do these talks every thursday at uh, 5 15 pm eastern time but next thursday we are taking a break for the holidays and we'll be back on jan 5th uh, with ted parton 